and welcome to the latest episode of the Jamf After Dark podcast, a podcast to introduce you to the people at Jamf, learn about what we're up to when it comes to managing and securing Apple devices, along with what is happening in the IT landscape. I'm your co-host, Kat Garbus, joined by my co-host, friend, and colleague, Sean Rabbit. Hi, Kat. Hello, Hi. listeners. Hello, seven listeners. Yay! <laughs> All seven are out there in the audience today. Life is good. So, uh, Kat, where the heck are we? Because I've been like lost in a cloud for the last three days. We are live at Jana 2024 Woo! in Nashville, Tennessee. Hello, Nashville. And uh, we actually have some special guests here today. Some people have been talking a lot, I'm certain, all day here. So uh, Mr. John Strosel and uh, Mr. Milan Patel, welcome to Jamf After Dark live Yay. at uh, JNOC 2024. Yes, welcome. Yeah, thank you. This will probably come as a shock to you since you've never listened to the podcast, but we only have seven listeners. Yeah. So as you can see here, um, I don't listen to the podcast. It's okay. Do you listen to the podcast? Do you... I actually do, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yes. That's, uh, so we have one of the seven listeners. We have stickers for you then if you are one of the seven listeners. So life is good. Um, yeah, John, we've never met before. What do you do here? <laughs> Anything Tina tells me. <laughs> um, I'm the CEO of Jamf, and I've been uh, been the CEO for uh, just over a year now. Been with the company for nine years, though. Started off uh, on the revenue side, and then uh, worked worked through there, and uh, became the chief operating officer, and then um, moved into the to the CEO seat about a year ago when Dean retired. Excellent. How about you? What do you do here? Well, uh, I've got the privilege of working with a great team of product managers, owners, and engineers. And uh, together, we focus on building some security solutions for our customers, just making it easier for them to better protect their Macs and mobile. I'm going to go off script. Go off script. Scarily. Okay. okay. So, John, if you were a breakfast cereal, what free toy would come inside your box? Boy, that's a good one. Um, I used to like the spider rings. Spider rings. Yeah, spider rings. Scare my sister with them. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah, that was my that was my favorite. <laughs> Milan, how about you? Um, maybe one of those like little puzzle toys because I quite enjoy you know things like um, you know mini kind of Rubik's cubes or the little puzzles that you have to tease apart. There we go. So now we get a little know about each other there. So. I love it. Um, I feel like I broke the promise already because you went off script right away. And I said, we're going to stick to the script. So thanks, Sean, um, making me look bad. That's nice. It is my pleasure to be of assistance here for all of our seven listeners to get to know our champs better here on Champ After Dark. <laughs> so you both were up on the stage today. Uh, Melinda, you had helped deliver one of the State of the Unions. John, you were running the show basically for the big keynote today. Uh, what what announcement did we make that you all were just most excited about? Uh, John, if, if you don't mind starting with that one. Yeah, I really like the, um, that when there was a lot of them and we could run through the whole list. But if I had to pick one, it would probably be the endpoint data. That, that really excites me, especially when, you know, we start to talk about AI. What do you need for AI? You need data. Who has the most endpoint Apple data on the planet but Jamf? Actually, our customers do is because it's, it's the data of those of those companies. But the fact that you can gather all of that data and we're working on the APIs to make it more extensible and better, easy for you guys to all migrate into other into other applications. But really, that data is is uh, is paramount. We you know, you can tell what applications are on the device when those applications have been updated, um, what the usage of those applications are. You can do the health check of a device in order to make to prepare it for security. And we talked quite a bit about management and security together because they're inextricable. They're, they're really part of the two sides of the same coin. And, and the data really sets that in motion and illustrates that. And John, that's an excellent point about the data being the customer's data too. It's yeah. like, even in Jamf Cloud, it's a giant system of doom. You know, there's a lot of Jamf Cloud up there, but yeah. it's still an individual database for each individual company. So it's that's not right. like you're getting your data trained. Like a lot of people worried about AI or worried about, you know, Will my will my personal information get suddenly sucked into the giant database of it, of AI? And I'm glad that we're we're doing it responsibly. Yeah, absolutely. And then and then with Apple's devices becoming more and more powerful, and we start talking about AI, they can do the AI actually on the device. And because you have all of that data, it just makes it much easier. 
I think that's great. Melinda, how, same question for you. What was your favorite announcement from today and how do, how do you think that's gonna impact our customers? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think we kind of uh, ended up there with uh, John's answer. I think for me, it's probably gotta be AI Assistant. I know it's a big topic for everyone at the moment, but for me, it speaks to what we're trying to do within the product team in making our admins' lives easier. So I think AI does that, as you all saw kind of the demo earlier, right? It's almost like you have another kind of team member, another colleague that can sit next to you and help you, you know, to carry out whatever activities that you want. So instead of focusing on, you know, how to explicitly get the job done, you can focus more on your strategy, you can focus more on the policies and the outcomes you're looking for rather than specific steps. And for me, like, the AI assistant is really exciting because it's not just limited to one specific feature, one specific capability, but it's something that we can weave across different parts of the platform. So whether you're you know, looking to manage an application or you're looking to you know, improve compliance or something else, it's something we can weave into all of the features that you use every day. Since you've been talking to customers since the announcement here this morning and the keynote, what have you heard from uh, the customers that you've been talking to that they're most excited about too on, on top of the AI announcements. What do you think is the, the big call out? Yeah, I think uh, two of the big ones, I think definitely have to be blueprints and compliance benchmarks. So I've been on the booth today speaking to lots of different customers. I know we got some big cheers for both of these features uh, a bit earlier. But again, I think what what we're hearing from customers is exactly what we were hoping to hear, which is Again, we're helping to make their lives easier by just taking out a lot of the unnecessary steps and the manual overhead that you used to have with many sort of management uh, functions, as well as you know trying to get a device into compliance. But now you can do that with you know minimal steps. So again, you can kind of just focus on what it is you're trying to achieve at the end of the day, as opposed to how to get there. I'm just going to call out too that since the point of the pod, uh, the keynote there, where they also did the State of the Union announcements there and I'm glad to hear that we have the DDM Explorer out there so when Apple innovates we'll be able to actually uh, let our customers explore and play with the declarative device management too right away that's that's a very exciting uh, new thing and to have it just dump right into Jam Pro ready to go as a blueprint too I think it'd be great yeah yeah glad that came out too yeah. Kat would you hear anything what's your what's your takeaway so far I think for me, uh, when everyone was celebrating about compliance benchmarks, I was also celebrating too. I always think of the marketplace. Um, it's obviously more crowded than ever before. And I think that's something that really separates Jamf from the rest. Uh, I think management and compliance obviously go hand in hand. We said that beautifully in the keynote uh, today. So I was personally just really excited to see the compliance benchmarks baked into Jamf Pro. Of course, I did get a little bit ahead of myself because there's going to be people listening to the podcast that haven't actually seen the keynote at this point, and they're going to say, like, did Rabbit just mention blueprints? And it's like, are we in Jamf now? What's going on here? So who wants to explain what blueprints actually does here in the world? Yeah, of course. I think, you know, um, when you think about blueprints, right now you think about kind of Jamf now. We've had blueprints in Jamf now for the last 10 years. So it can be, you know, almost kind of difficult to understand, you know, what's sort of new. Often when you look at blueprints, it just seems like it's just a UX interface, but it's so much more sort of uh, beyond that that we've built. So when you look at blueprints in Jamf Pro, imagine an entirely new architecture that helps us deliver blueprints powered by declarative device management. So in the sort of coming months, coming years, what we can do is that we can leverage this new architecture in order to adopt new declarations that Apple brings forward and generally just meet same day support a lot easier and get those Apple features to you much quicker. Awesome. So I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit too. There were some, I would think, maybe not as big of announcements, but I did want to talk about some of the things like for watch that came up, some interesting use cases for that, because I think there's some things we teased in the keynote that we can't always fully go into that detail on. John, I was curious on you, if you had any thoughts around some of those features like Apple Watch and how that might be used in the industry that may not have been fully obvious uh, in the keynote. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can, I can speak from experience of, of, of speaking with several customers. And I think one of the things that excites me, when, whenever the investment community or, or other companies will ask, you know, what excites you about Jamf? And it's really that deskless workflow. 
It's the capability to use all of these different form factors to do things that we haven't imagined before. And I'm, I'm amazed by our customers' ingenuity and how they're using these, these devices. You know, for example, and, and the other part about that is, is that they're very non-tech forward industries. And I'll, I'll just talk about the airlines for one. We've, we've had airline customers who've said, look, we wanna get the watch under management because we wanna be able to streamline our baggage uh, handling capabilities where every time a baggage handler touches that bag, they know exactly where that bag is and when it was touched versus, and they've done the math on this, having to take a device out of a holster in Minnesota, of course, take off their gloves, take the device out of the holster, <laughs> scan the bag, put it back in, put their gloves back on and move that bag. And by having just RFID directly from the baggage tag to the watch and just moving those bags along, they save millions of dollars just ex and that's just one airline and there's several airlines we have several airline customers um, a beverage company that owns their own distribution network wants to track their their drivers they have refrigerated trucks and they want to make sure they know where they're at and they don't want them you know looking in TikTok on their phone or whatnot they so they have it all on their on their watch um, i had uh discussions in europe where there was a a fire department actually that pulled out an iPad and they said, you know, today we have two of these on every truck. And he pulled out the iPad and he showed me a map of the city. And when he clicked on a building, it showed the real time traffic around that building, the closest hospital, the capacity, the real time capacity of that hospital and what their specialties were, because it doesn't help to take a, to take a patient to a hospital where they can't help them. So they could do all of that real time from an iPad, each truck, had two of those devices and they were expanding that out. And that's just one city, one municipality, and one department in one country. And I just, I can't imagine how that is gonna proliferate across the industry and all of the great things. And, and I've been doing this business for almost 35 years. And when I started out my career, it was really about, okay, our customers would tell us, I started at IBM, and our customers would tell us, this is the process we have, now make the technology fit it. For the first time in my career, I'm hearing, hey, we want the technology so that we can de design our processes around that. That to me is really exciting. And when we talk about the total addressable market, we have no idea what the total addressable market for this use case is because it hasn't been developed yet. But we're seeing customers do it all the time, every day. And, and that, that's what really excites me. So that was, so I kind of went a little off script no, with the watch, good. but it expands from the watch into all the different form factors. And I haven't even touched on Vision Pro. That's a whole different podcast. We can talk about that later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we might be talking about that now, but I did actually want to call out a session that was really good. Speaking of airlines. Uh, yeah. So Allegiant Airlines was doing a session um, specifically in their iPad management. The, uh, true story. I was the one that sold Allegiant Airlines Jam Pro when I worked at Apple Retail. So I was like, yeah, right <laughs> on the back of a retail store. Uh, and then Kat said you should come work here. But that's another story. Remind me of the name of the person from SAP who was in the keynote. I cannot remember their name to save my life. But they were on an airplane, and whoever their competitor was was sitting like right next to them working on their computer oh, and yeah. said, they yeah. need a Vision Pro. <laughs> yeah, It's like, yeah, put this on your head, and you won't be able to see the confidential information that you're showing to your co your competitors literally right there. So yeah. that, that was an interesting use case. So. Uh, what what do we think about Vision Pro management? I know that Jeremy Butcher was here up on stage talking about all the new features that we can do for management. Um, we've got full support for that now, don't we? Yeah, um, we've got both sort of management and security capabilities running on Vision Pro at the moment. But yeah, for me, Vision Pro is like super exciting. I think both as a consumer, uh, it's really exciting because you know I'm imagining sort of I, I don't have one yet, but. The ways in which you know you can maybe interact with kind of your family members, you know, if you're going on a plane, you know, being able to watch a movie with like full sort of immersion. So I think as a consumer, I'm really excited to see you know what new iterations that have come out and you know what they bring. But as a sort of professional uh, in this industry, I think what's really exciting is if we compare that to the Apple Watch, we know that how creative our customers have been with the Apple Watch and how they're using Jaff in order to manage these watches to enable some of the kind of workflows that John was talking about. So I think what's really exciting is just that unlimited sort of potential it has, where we don't really know what customers are going to do with them based on their industry, based on their specific workflows within their departments or specific individuals. We'll you know, learn about them over the coming months and years. And speaking of which, so many people have personal 
Vision Pro is the ability to be able to enroll that Vision Pro through account-driven user enrollment now is going to be very, very hot. And uh, I believe that uh, Matt Blasak's going to be talking about how he can even use a, a network relay payload on a Vision Pro now, too. So that's one more thing that's really nice. You won't have to sit there and try to type your password to start your VPN up. You can just have Jam Pro push it on down for you. Yeah. So very exciting there. So. John, you brought your Vision Pro with you today, right now, right? <laughs> no, I have it at home, actually. Oh, um, we're I was... trying to fool the listeners of the seven listeners. It's okay. <laughs> Except for these guys. They know what this, what's going on. But Now, was... if you look underneath your seats, <laughs> you will not find a Vision Pro. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually invited uh, by Apple to, to go out to um, the campus there in Cupertino, and we were, went to the Steve Jobs Theater, and um, Tim Cook and, and some of the other executives really showed how they were utilizing the Vision Pro for the industries. And there was Fortune 500 companies there. Um, you know, Lufthansa came and, and Deutsche Bahn and, and, uh, and Porsche was there. And they showed real-time use cases for how these companies are utilizing the Vision Pro, how you can design a vehicle or how you can put it on and look at um, a printer and, and open the door, but then be able to look through diagrams, what needs to be checked and how do you check it? And it can show all of that real time versus going off and trying to find instructions and explain it to you in local language. All of those things were just fantastic uses for the Vision Pro. So I think there's a lot of a great um, use for it in the industry. That's so great. I know we're a little close on time, but I did want to ask both of you, what's one thing you really want listeners and our customers to take away from today as they look forward post JNUC and some of the things we announced? What are What's one thing that maybe didn't come up in this discussion that you want people to walk away with and think about? I think for me, it is how we're answering some of the sort of requests that you had or have uh, been submitting over the last sort of few years, right? There's a general theme if you can, you know, look at the different sort of capabilities that we announced uh, in simplicity in making workflows much more sort of approachable for you. So whether it's blueprints and being able to manage your device easier, whether it's compliance benchmarks and being able to get that device to be compliant according to your standards much sooner, or advanced threat controls, right? Being able to just say, okay, if there is suspicious activity, just go ahead and sort of block it. There's that common theme of simplicity uh, that we're trying to carry out across different workflows. So um, the thing that's most important for us now is just really to understand your feedback, uh, understand how you're adopting them, what's working, what's not working. And I, I know I can speak for the entire product team and our engineering counterparts as well, where we love your feedback, right? We really love understanding what you're trying to accomplish what's working, what your pain points are, what could be a bit quicker. And according to that, you know, we're better able to inform our future roadmap. So I think that's kind of the main thing for me. John, how about you? you stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I, I just need to, I need to reiterate that. Um, you know, when I said this morning that Jamf Nation really helps us steer the ship, I wasn't just saying it. That is, that is really the case. We went completely into security because you all had asked us to do that. You said you would deploy more Apple devices if you could trust them to access your company resources. And we listen. I mean, this is really the group that can help us make the products because I'm not a believer in going out and building products and hope that they will come. That is not the model we have. We listen to our customers and then you tell us what you need and then we build it. And Lo and behold, then they buy it. So it's a, it, go, it works well both ways. So we really do listen and, and we do want your feedback. Sean, I want to even ask, I want your thoughts. Like what's something you want listeners and customers to walk away from, from today's announcements and looking forward? The most important thing to me is hop on the beta. Like yeah. it is, this is the time, this is one of these beautiful moments uh, working for Jam because the toy is brand new. <laughs> And because the toy is brand new, it means that people have been working on the toy. It's still brand new to them. So if you have suggestions or you have feedback or you have something that you want to say, this is great or this is bad, now is the time. Because if you want to see it in like final product forever and ever, this is where the standard's getting locked in, folks. You need to jump on the, uh, on the beta to go to account.jamp.com if you're an existing customer. Simply click on product feedback and sign up for those betas. Get in there, play with it. It's going to be fun. On, and this is the drinking game, but don't forget, non-production test equipment. So everyone take a shot now that we've had that. You got your, I got your whiskey, right? Is that, oh, okay, fine. It's just bourbon. bourbon. That's fine. Yeah, bur <laughs> bourbon's good enough. So yeah. 
I think for me, um, two things. One, we've always in a way treated MDM and security as separate entities and to a degree they are. But at the same time, I think we've just really kind of narrowed that out. Like they really do go hand in hand. And if you are treating them separately to just kind of think differently and, and change that mindset. And then the, I'd say the other thing is ease of use between AI and blueprints. Uh, we understand like there may be somewhat of a learning curve. And if there's a way to save you time or help you learn faster, I think those ha are some of the things that I want people to think about and, and walk away with. Um, I, I would just hope that, you know, people try things out. I'm one of those folks, I guess we're making friends with AI. Uh, hopefully it won't turn into a Skynet situation, but um, you know, that's, I think we're that's pretty safe, at. Kat. We're I think safe. we're okay. okay. Yeah. All it's right. all good there. All right. But yeah, I, th I think now is going to be that interesting time in our lives. We're going to find out playing with declarative device management. Okay, what did that break? Just to be on the same. Not that it's going to break something, but just in case you want to put it out there and, and make sure that you let everybody in the world know on Jamf Nation or uh, with feedback through the beta programs too. Let, let folks know what you're running into. It's a great time. It's an exciting, interesting time for change and, and new things. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap up. So I just, oh. We do have a tech tip for the day. We and do. by tech tip, I mean we have plants in the audience. So <laughs> uh, I believe, who set this up? Was it Richard? Was it you or is this Marcus here? Okay. So technically, one of my partners in crime here has a tech tip that we're going to do a chocolate throwdown. Okay. So it's going to be which has the better chocolate? Is it the United Kingdom, or is it Australia? And so we have two chocolates here that we can test out live on stage. Now, you two are rocking bods that, you know, uh, they can't see on, on, the, on the podcast here, but just superheroes. So I don't know if you would want to eat this chocolate because I don't know if it's your thing, but I know as a fat man, I can eat some chocolate. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there you And Cap, you can eat. But we, we have this, we have to have a vote. So, okay, I will I will run it off. Um, right. I I'm I'm little, but I can eat. Uh, there are people in the audience. You are not to validate this, but I will I'll run six miles at some point and run it off. So, so. would you like to volunteer as tribute for uh, judges and the and the chocolate off here and potentially uh, alienate a whole pile of our customers by which country is better or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit biased here. Yeah, you're but biased. You're get the vote. <laughs> ah, so, so we need unbiased. He's from the theory. United yeah. Kingdom, All so. Right. So let, let's present, uh, let, let's go with chocolate the first. I, uh oh. I don't want to know. I don't want to okay. know. We're, we're now I, battling. Okay, so we have the Tim Tam. So right. direct from Australia, uh, which flavor of Tim Tam do we have here, too? These are just the chocolate. Okay, nothing fancy, right. just delicious chocolate. Thank you. This is a terrible okay. tech tip. So um, they're both just, just both do the betas. That's, that's so the we have the tip. best chocolate here. Nothing is better than the ASMR of eating a Tim Tam. Here we go, podcast listeners. <laughs> you didn't know this was an ASMR podcast now, so. This is a long-standing UK-Australia rival. So the Tim Tam. Yes, we are. <laughs> Commonwealth will be separated based on who's going to be in charge based on this cookie here. So um, that was a Tim Tam. Also, while this is going on, I just got a security update notification. This is like <laughs> on my computer. So, yeah. Thanks, Doctor K. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Doctor K. <laughs> She's updated us. We still are. We have we have our nudge in here with the. Uh... Um, can I just point out the joke on the back? Ah, yeah. so there's jokes on the back of ours. Mine is, what's a penguin's favorite ice cream flavor? Fistachio. <laughs> All right, you're going to get mad, but I don't care. Um, so, <laughs> so the first one um, I think is is crispy, but it has a nice deep chocolate. There's a far uh, there's a deeper balance of cocoa. Um, I also think the outer chocolate visibly is a bit nicer. The texture I think is nicer. The second one, the the chocolate looks like. Richard's anemic. been keeping it, it under looks his anemic. arm, I it think, looks, is what it is. It looks a little yeah. sick. Yeah. Um, 
So I, I think it's almost a depressed version of the first one. So I, I, I prefer the first one, honestly. I'm being very harsh. I think in another life I could be Gordon Ramsay's like daughter. But um, I want the first one. I want more of that one. John, what do we think? Tim Tams all the way. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> What do we got? Well, I have to go with the home team and go Penguin. Okay, so Penguin there. Ah, man, I don't know. They're both really good. Hey, how do you keep an idiot in suspense? I'll tell you tomorrow. Anyway, um, <laughs> these are both good. <laughs> so it all comes down to me to make the tie-breaking vote. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to have to go for legion, uh, allegiance to Australia here on this. The Tim Tam is yeah. the superior. <laughs> Thank you for participating in this silliness because this is why we've gotten together for 15 years at JNUC. It's not just the technology. It's not just the learning. It's the people of the great Jamf Nation. Thank you all for joining so very, very much. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for joining us for all these many years, too. So uh, any last things that you guys would like to say before we, uh, before we wrap up? We're holding up John's dinner. That's all I know. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I already have a, I have a text from Tina saying that he has dinner. So I know we're, we got to get John That's out of here. That's fair. Should we close up? We are good to go. All so. right. Jamf After Dark is a podcast from Jamf and is copyright 2024. All rights reserved. Technical details and product offerings may change at any time. So always check jamf.com for the latest information on our products and services. And you can reach out to us at, or if you have questions or comments, suggestions, show topics, fan mail, or just, hey, you want to yell at me for some reason, simply send a friendly email to info at jamf.com with the subject, attention to the podcast. We are also a sponsor of the Mac Admins Foundation, and a whole pile of jams are available at the Mac Admins Slack. And of course, if you need support, visit support.jamf.com to open a ticket and get your technical questions answered. Special thanks to our guests this week, John and Melind. Thank you to our audio engineers, Merlin Gluck and Martin Nielsen, as Sean lovingly calls them, the M&Ms. They help us sound great. And until next time, for Sean Rabbit, I'm Kat Garbus. And as long as I haven't gotten fired after this, uh, for Kat Garbus, I'm Sean Rabbit. And uh, we'll catch you after dark again. Thank you, Jamf Nation. Happy Jada. Bye. Bye.